you are in for a treat today because we're going to take a lesson from one of the all-time greats. Now, Rafael Nadal is an amazing tennis player and he has so much to teach musicians because possibly his biggest asset is his awesome mental strength and that transfers across directly to music too. But this particular thing is a mental skill that was deliberately trained in him by his coach, his uncle Tony. Hey friends, Mark Morley Fletcher here and welcome back to the channel. And first up, quick apologies for the video footage I'm using of Rafa here. And it comes from a visit I made to Wimbledon back in 2019. I was lucky to get there and see the quarterfinals and I just couldn't resist using it here. So there you go. So what is this clever approach that Uncle Tony used to train Rafa's mental game? And what he did, not all the time, but some of the time, is he would deliberately use really rubbish tennis balls for Rafa to practice with. So here is a guy who is on his way to becoming one of the best in the world, and he could easily use the best equipment, the best facilities, and they would have helped him train his technique faster. But Uncle Tony deliberately got him to use really rubbish tennis balls, makes it inconsistent, makes it hard to train technique, makes it frustrating. So why on earth would he do that? And it's the frustration that is exactly the reason for this. Because Rafa had to learn how to deal with that. He had to be capable of saying, you know what, this is not what I want to be doing, but I'm going to put all that to one side. I'm just going to focus on doing the best I can in the situation that is here. So this, quite frankly, deliberate sabotage of technical progress was in service of actually developing greater mental strength, willingness to face adverse conditions and not worry about it, not wish things were different, but just get on with it and accept the situation. Now, if Uncle Tony had wanted to take this up another level, something he could have done is he could have moved Rafa's training from Mallorca to up here in Scotland where I'm based. Because let me tell you, I've had one or two training sessions with a coach on a winter's evening when it's been freezing outside. The tennis balls have been in the shed all day and they are literally frozen. And I tell you, in those cases, they don't just bounce badly, they drop and they pretty much barely bounce at all. So very frustrating to play in those conditions. And I'm glad to say after a little while, I did actually manage to see this as a way of developing mental strength. But yeah, that's one for Uncle Tony to consider. Get up to Scotland, frozen tennis balls. Maybe Rafa would be even better. So what's the big picture here? Well, external conditions are things that we cannot control and conditions that we would rather not playing come up all the time when you're, you're playing music. And so the key thing is to learn to accept and learn to put into practice that you can't control the conditions, but you can control your response to them. Accepting the conditions, whatever they are, is what allows you to do your best in the circumstances, even if those circumstances are not what you would like. But when you don't accept the conditions, when you wish things were different or you start thinking, oh, this is unfair, that's when you get distracted from the things that you can control and that is when your performance suffers. By the way, if that was really useful, what I've just shared with you, then I would love it if you'd just give this video a like. Thanks. So let's just look at a couple of practical examples of what this might look like. So when you're actually performing music, then it's pretty easy to see that conditions can affect you. So maybe there's a problem with the venue. Maybe your equipment isn't working as you would like it to. Maybe the other musicians you're playing with are being difficult. But these things can also have an impact when you're practicing as well. Maybe someone comes in and interrupts you and you find that frustrating. Or maybe what's going on around you means that you just have less time to practice that day than you'd like. Or you're just not feeling as focused as you normally do. All these are things that can easily have an impact when you're playing music and the more that you can just accept them and get on with them, the better. Now, of course, it's much easier for me to just tell you that you should accept things than for you to actually do it. If you really want to dig into this, then check out my course, Unlock Your Performance, which goes much deeper and it gives you lots of practical exercises. I'll put a link up there on the screen and in the description below. 
But I want to give you one simple practical tip that you can use to actually do this, and that is to reframe the situation. So rather than getting frustrated, look at it as a chance for you to build this mental strength. So you're seeing it as a chance for you to practice this technique. And so just approach it with that idea of bring it on. Here is an opportunity for me to get better, for me to develop my mental game. And if you'd like some more insights into Rafa's mental strength and what you can learn from it, check out the video that I made reflecting on my visit to Wimbledon next. And if you'd like the special practice and performance tips that I only share with subscribers, then head on over to playinthezone.com and sign up for the emails. They're free. I've been Mark Woolley-Fletcher. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.